Hi guys, it's Steve at Goltech Systems. We're in the Admin and Demo Center. Interesting video for us today. We are looking at Unicore iMini Lite and comparison to have a look at some accuracy. So it's a video that we've been asked for, you know, Unicore iMini Lite is quite a new device. So how does it stack up accuracy wise? We know there's been a few videos circling around online about uh, spin axis and stuff with iMini. We're not addressing that today. We are just purely gonna hit some shots I'm gonna give you my personal views to this. Um, that's how I, I will see it at the end. Um, and we will go from there. We're, I'm only gonna hit a couple of shots. This is a quick video in terms of amount of shots I'm gonna hit, but we are gonna do a much longer, let the cameras run to hit a lot more shots. Probably be doing that in the next week or so. Um, and then you can really get in depth data from all of those um, shots that we're gonna hit. But as I say today, I'm just gonna hit a couple so you can see exactly straight away what the differences are instantly. Um, one thing I'm going to address first of all is setup. Setup is important. So when you're doing this sort of thing, you need to have a look and get these devices set up as best you can to be as fair as you can to them. So what I mean by that is we will talk through how we calibrated because this isn't as just straightforward as putting the devices down and looking at them side by side and thinking they're done. It doesn't work that way as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to talk you through how we've done it. We put the calibration alignment rod down on our mat and we laser lined that to the target line, the center line on the FSX Play software. You'll see that image um, up on the screen. So we've done that first of all. We then done something slightly different. We then moved the GC3 physically. So it was then zero, zero on the, um, on the, to the alignment rod. So we wanted to do it that way. And I'll explain why. Once we got the GC3 at zero, zero to the alignment rod, we then laser lined the iMini light to the GC3 as best we could. Now the iMini light has got a very nice base that gives you a very good straight line to, to actually see alignment. The GC3 obviously uses the alignment rod, so it doesn't need it, but it's quite curved. So it wasn't the easiest thing to do, but it was pretty darn close and as close as we could get it. And I think for me, that was the fairest way of aligning those devices up. Unicore is already set to zero, zero in its own software. So it's just a question of trying to get those ones square to that. Therefore, as far as I'm concerned, those two are as good as it's gonna get. And that's what we're focusing on today. Everyone's asking about how does it stack up against a, a, a Foresight camera, indoor, similar technology, etc., etc. The next thing we've done was software because this one's important as well. If you overlook it, you will know that we are running the base softwares for the devices. We've got the TrackMan on the, on the iPad. We've got View on the 55 and FSX Play up on the big screen. All three devices have been set with their altitude. That's something that can easily be overlooked. So they're all set to zero, um, zero feet um, for altitude. So that's taken out of the equation. However, Trapman and Foresight, you can change the temperature of the environment. So those are both set at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We can't do it with Unicore. So again, whether that will cause a discrepancy, it, we will find out. But effectively, that's the one thing that we couldn't balance. We've done everything else as best we can it's as about as good as a test as we can do. Um, sadly, I'm still nursing a little injury at the moment, so I'm gonna take it very easy um, in what I'm doing today. But again, let's just get some shots out there so we can see. Okay. So, all have tracked, which is good news. Let's, I've put all the data points in relevant line order for me, so I can just spin around and just shout them out exactly as I'm seeing them. So 97.7 on the GC3 carry, 99.2 on the Trapman, 99.3 on the iMini Lite. So we are seeing 97.2, sorry, 97.7 to 99.3 as, as the min and max. And we're seeing 0.1 of a yard from the Trapman to the iMini Lite, that's quite impressive. Um, offline, 4.9 right, 1.3 left on the Trapman, 4.6 right on the iMini Lite. I'll be honest, I've hit a couple of shots obviously before I've run the camera, and I have noticed that the trap man is saying that everything is considerably left of the other two. Don't know why, I've done everything I can do as far as I can see to set these up perfectly. For some reason it keeps showing left. I don't know if it's interference with the devices, with the metal, whatever it is, but that's what it's seeing. Can't do anything more than what I've done, but that's what's coming out. Side angle 1.2 right, one left, two degrees right. So 0.8 of a difference between the iMini and the GC3. Ball speed. Now this is important because what we will see as a consistency going through this as a ball speed will then obviously have a knock-on effect with carry. So 81.2 
on the GT3, 82.2 on the Trapman, 81.9 on the iMini Lite. So 0.7 of a mile an hour between the GT3 and the iMini Lite. Backspin 8459, 8461 on the Trapman, 8553 on the iMini, very close. Side spin 508 on the GC3 and 224 on the iMini, so GC3 saw more there. Uh, launch angle 22.1, 22.2, 22.2. .2. Wow, 0.1 of a degree between those three devices. Spin axis 3.4 right, 0.8 right, and 1.5 right. So in, in abouts. Let's just get one more away with a wedge. So we can just see again. Pulled. All have tracked, so that's good. What have we got? We'll just run through those numbers very quickly again. 102.9, 104.3, 103.6. yards left, 8.6 left, 4.3 left, 2.2 left, 3.6 left, 2 left. 83.7, Wow, those spin numbers are good. Um, side spin 252 left on the GC3, 142 left on the iMini. Launch in 22.8, 22.8, 22.7. one of a degree between all three and launch. Uh, 1.9 left on the spin axis, 2.8 left on the spin axis, 1.1 on the spin axis. Yeah, good numbers. Let's just jump up a little bit more in club. Again, don't want to hurt myself, but I want to give you a, a comparison today so we can see. Okay, too bad. Not too bad at all. Let's see all of tracked, which is good news. Let's see what we got. 135.9 carry, 139.1, 138. So we're seeing, if you said 136 for argument's sake, three yards from top to bottom. Um, but we're seeing the, the I mini light in the middle of that, just higher to the closer to the trackman. 87 offline right, 47 right, 113 right. So I mini saw it 11 right, that saw it nearly nine right, a couple of yards again, and obviously with the trackman at 47. 2.6 right side angle, 0.1, 2.3 right. Those GC3 I mini light have been very close um, on side angle, which is good. Ball speed 100.6, 101.7, 101.4. So again, we're we're splitting hairs over a mile an hour, which is uh, which is good news. Backspin 5647, 5618, 5694. They're all in 56 territory, which is again mighty. Uh, launch in 19.3, 19.2, 19.2. So again, all in uh, in one uh, point one of a degree, which is very good. The side spin, sorry, on there was 154 right against 510 right. So that saw it again a little bit higher this time on the i mini as opposed to the last the other way around. Uh, 16 right on axis, four on axis, and 5.1. So again, relatively close. Let's get one more away. Uh, I'm going to hit a bit of a pull shot just to see what that's like. It's always good to throw in a, a bit of a curved ball at it and just see what it does when we're not hitting things straight. Okay, just run through these numbers again. 134.2, 139.1, point, so that's five yards from Trapman to GC3. 136.2 iMini light. So iMini light was actually in the middle, um, near enough in the middle anyway. 24.9 left, 25.3 left, 23.8 left. So again, from the bottom, 23.8 to 25, you're talking one and a half yards that they these three devices have had a spread for where that ball just landed. I think that's mighty. When we're talking about accuracy, you know, when you're playing sim golf or whatever, you want your ball to be landing where it needs to be landing, you know, if you think it's relevant. But again, when you hit something like that, it's a pull where you could get a bit of a, you know, a bit of a stronger discrepancy, so to speak. That's that's really good. 4.2 left on side angle, 6.5 left, 3.9 left. So 3.9, 4.2, very close again between these two. 
101, 100.5. So a mile an hour stronger iMini lighter GC3 and half a mile stronger on the Trackman. Spin, 4710, 4864, 4733. 23 RPM difference between iMini light and your um, GC3. Side spin, 1044, 1160. Again, very good on those two. Launch, it's probably gonna be close. 18, 17.9, 17.9. I don't even know I'm questioning launch anymore because it's that close every single time. Spin axis, 12.5, 13.8 on the iMini, 9.6 on the Trapman. Look, I'm gonna cut it there short today, guys. You know, as I say, we do a much longer all the way through the bag video with Tom. Um, get him in and, and, and work through on a longer video so you really can see the shots. How do I think it stacks up? From everything that I've seen, I think they're all good in that sense. And that's just not me saying that because I'm trying to sell them. I think the Trapman needs its environment for definitely inside. But in terms of the technology, I would say, you know, if you're, if you're indoor, we'd be looking at IO in that sense. It, it's stronger. We know camera is a, is a better thing to have indoors. So that I've put down just to throw another one in the mix so you get a good idea in terms of where they both sit on, on, on comparison. Um, I think if you were buying a device, what would you look at? That's a tough call between these ones because Foresight, cracking company, been around a long time, well trusted in the industry you know you're not going to get away from that it's a stable solid device it is that good so yeah you know it's a cracking device you are going to be very happy if you've bought a gc3 and um yeah you are going to get fsx play software because it comes with it so you are paying for that in the cost so that's something you've got to consider and i think this is where you've got to start thinking about what device is going to be best for you because everyone's a little bit different so and the way that I would explain that is if you came into our showroom, you know, if we were looking at a device to fit you up for a SIM or something like that, what do I want to buy? It's going to be more questions and things like, I don't know, do you like the photo video replay that Unicore devices offer? You know, it's going to show you that club coming in to impact. So you've got a good idea of roughly where you've hit the ball from side on there. It's a great feature that comes with the Unicore devices for the, the, for the floor mounted, the iMinis. Um, GC3 sadly can't do that one. So that's a nice feature. Um, if you like FSX Play software and you want FSX Play and then you can bolt GS Pro on, getting the best of both worlds. We know that FSX Play courses are quite expensive to buy individually, but you get a good little selection when you buy the unit. So again, you're getting two softwares and there's, there's features that are gonna be in FSX Play that are gonna be much more beneficial than say maybe features in GS Pro. So that's quite good because you've got two softwares running, whereas you're probably only likely to put GS Pro onto a Unicore device. So again, that's a good feature for that way around. I think portability is the key here, and that's where you will see a bit of a change in what you might want to buy. If you want portability, iMini against GC3, I could understand why you'd go to a GC3. If you're gonna afford the extra few grand, I could understand why you'd wanna to go to a GC3 at that point and spend the extra money. However, it's this one that puts a bit of a kicker in that. Unicore iMini Lite, if you're not planning to take that device outside and you can hardwire the device inside, which obviously this one is, all of a sudden you're saving a, a fair wedge of money. You know, that is a, a substantial amount of money that you can put towards projectors, screens, etc. Um, when you're comparing those two devices. And if your plan is that you're gonna be running GS Pro software and you really like GS Pro and what it brings, and you're really only wanting to use GS Pro software, that's a hard thing to overlook at that point. Mm -hmm.